Drawing this bumblebee is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So as usual, we're going to start by creating a new canvas so that we have somewhere to draw. For reference, these are the dimensions of my canvas, but make sure that you pick something that works for your own project requirements. And if you're not exactly sure what that means, I have an entire video in which I'm going to teach you how to pick a canvas size for digital art, so I'm going to link it in the description below if you want to check it out. Now the only reason I am using these dimensions is because I am painting in a pre-textured file that, as you can see, has some watercolor paper texture to it. It is not essential, but if you want to check it out, it will be linked in the description below. It is part of my big brush bundle. If you don't have it though, don't worry, I'm still going to give you tips to get some sort of a watercolor texture later. And we're going to start with a very rough sketch. So for that, create a new layer and rename it to Sketch. Now, since our B has some symmetry to it, both sides are roughly the same, we're going to get a little bit of help from Procreate to create the sketch. So going in the wrench icon menu here at the top, selecting the canvas option, you're going to activate the drawing guide right here. Now, this is not exactly what we want here. So we're going to go ahead and click edit drawing guide and we're going to pick the symmetry option here on the bottom right. Now, this is what you want. You want a vertical line that is roughly in the middle. If it is not in the middle and if it's not vertical, you can use this little blue dot here in the middle to move it around and the green one to change the angle. You can also go in the option here in the bottom, making sure that vertical is selected and making sure that assisted drawing is activated and that rotational symmetry is deactivated. The other options that you see, such as opacity and thickness, are not necessarily important. They don't change the final result, it just changes the way this guide is displayed. Now, if you go back in your layer panel, you're going to see assisted written under sketch. If you don't see it, just go ahead and tap on the sketch and activate it manually in the menu. And now you see whatever you draw on one side of the canvas is going to be automatically mirrored on the other side. So that's going to save us a bunch of time for the sketch. In terms of color, you can pick whatever you want for the sketch. I like going in with gray, but we're not going to see it in the final result. And for the brushes, in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate. It's going to allow you to get, I would say, you know, 80, 85% of the way there. And I'm also going to be suggesting brushes from my big brush bundle, so the watercolor brushes. And these brushes can help you not only save some time, but also get more professional results. So again, it is not essential, but if you want to check it out, it is linked in the description below and you can find a promo code there as well, a special promo code just for the YouTube people. So, in terms of free brushes, you can pick from the sketching panel the HP pencil, that's what I would recommend, or if you have the watercolor brushes, just go ahead and pick the coloring pencil. And we're going to start by roughly mapping out the main shape for the body, so a circle and then an oval. So nothing crazy here, and you can see it just automatically creates it on the other side of the, the line as well, so super helpful, you just have to draw half of the line. So once you have your circle and your ellipse for the body, you can also draw a head, which is going to be this kind of um, half moon shape at the top, I guess. And for the wings, I like to draw a curved line for the top of the top wing and then a straighter line for the bottom part. And the bottom wing, I like to draw a straight line for the top of the wing and then a curved line for the bottom of the wing. So something like this. Now for the mosaic pattern in the wing, you can really do whatever you want. I'm still going to show you what I do, but I'm not going to try going in with explanations. Otherwise, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense. So look at the video and either copy what I'm doing or do it on your own way. It doesn't really matter. You can, you know, really experiment and have fun in the wings. And the beauty of having symmetry activated is that you don't have to sketch it on the other side, it's automatically going to be there. Now you might also want to add some antennas, and <laughs> it's always hard for me to say, 
And for the legs, well, you're gonna draw three legs per side, and I like to just draw them in segments. So three little segments. The first two are gonna be really stretched out ovals like this, and then the last segment you can just draw a little line because it usually is a little bit thinner. And if you want, you can kind of turn it into a reverse triangle, or not reverse triangle, just a triangle basically, like this. And once you're happy with your rough sketch, you can go ahead in the wrench icon menu and deactivate the drawing guide. And also deactivate drawing assist in your sketch menu here. And that is going to allow you to use the arrow tool to position your B wherever you want it to be on the canvas. And you can also use the distort option to change the proportions a little bit before adding the colors. Okay, so before we start adding the colors, we might want to change the blending mode, the sketch and the opacity a little bit. So for that, just go back to your layer panel and then clicking on the little N next to the check mark, you're gonna be able to change the blending mode. I'm gonna go with multiply, which is going to allow us to see the sketch better on darker colors. And I'm gonna lower the opacity until I can just barely see my sketch. Here it's a question of personal preference, so you can experiment with the opacity that you like. You're then going to create a new layer, put it below the sketch and rename it to color. Now, in terms of brushes, again, you have a few options. In terms of free brushes, you could go in the airbrushing panel, picking the hard brush, and then lowering the opacity, which is the slider here on the left or the right, depending on your interface. And you can see by lowering the opacity, you're going to get some sort of an overlap, which is going to be really important in the next few steps. You're not going to get the texture, of course, but I'm going to give you a few tips to create it on your own, like I was telling you. Now, if you have the watercolor brushes though, go ahead and pick the Dark Edges watercolor. It has a bunch more texture included in it, so it's gonna be really helpful. And for the color, you're just gonna pick a super bright orangey yellow like this. And you're gonna start by just coloring the first half of the top part of the body, so like this. And try not to lift your pencil, try to do it in just one stroke. And then you're gonna draw a stripe on the middle part of the bottom part of the body. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. If not, make sure you peek at the video and you're gonna understand what I mean. Again, try to not lift your pencil in this step because it's going to create overlaps and we want to use those overlaps purposefully like we're doing here. So once you're done mapping out the main color shape, you can just go over and by just overlapping your color, you can create shadows. So here I'm drawing shadows on the left side of my B and then adding a small little one on the right side as well. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but with a grayish brownish color. So here we don't want to go with pure black because it doesn't come out super good with watercolor brushes. It doesn't look really nice. So you want to pick a gray color that has a little bit more hue to it. So it's not purely gray. It has, you know, some brown or something like that. And then you're gonna color the top of the head, the bottom part here of the body, that kind of the bottom section of the top half and then the top section of the bottom half. <laughs> Again, that's kind of, you know, weird explanation. And then you're gonna draw a tiny little stripe on the very bottom here, leaving some room for a more cream color at the very, very bottom. Now, in terms of shadows here, you want to be careful. So you can draw again a shadow on the left side, but here when the top part of the body connects with the bottom part, you want to make sure that you keep that in mind. So you want to have a shadow that kind of delimitates the top part and the bottom part of the body. So something a little bit like this. That way it's going to give a little bit more dimension to your bee as opposed to it looking like a shapeless blob. It is actually going to look like it's made out of two parts. <laughs> And with the same color, you can just go over and draw your legs as well. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and comment honey. I know if you're new on the channel, you're probably like, what? what's the deal with the secret password? We've been doing this for a few months now. And honestly, it's just so cool because it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and paste my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. But the coolest part about it is that it allows us to see the creative community that we're building here on the channel, especially for me, because you guys know me, you see my face, you hear my voice, but I have no idea who you guys are. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes your face. And it's just really nice to see who's part of the channel. So leave a comment saying honey, and then we're gonna keep going by picking the cream color I was telling you about. So just making your yellow base even lighter and then going back to the bottom part of the bee. And like you did for everything else, just coloring it in one fell swoop and then adding shadows by overlapping your strokes on top of each other, basically. And here it looks crazy, but that's normal. The crazier it looks at this step, the better it's going to look later. 
So before we move on to blending and adding the watercolor effects, we're going to add a little bit more highlights. So using the eraser and setting it to the soft brush from the airbrushing panel, you can just go over and add some lights wherever you want. I'm going to be drawing mine in the middle part of the top part of the body, <laughs> if that makes sense again, as well as in the middle top part of the lower part of the body. So again, peek at the video. And you're also going to notice that I'm erasing in really rough little strokes, and that's good. You want to have as many wobbly shapes as possible so that when we blend, it's going to look more like watercolor. Speaking of which, it is time to blend all of these weird blobs around. So using either the smudge tool, which is this finger icon here, setting the brush to the soft brush again from the airbrushing panel, or if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and set the paintbrush tool, not the smudge tool, the paintbrush to the water blender. And here we want to blend these weird digital looking edges. So we don't want to blend the connection between the gray and the yellow, just within one color we want to blend the weird edges a little bit like this. So you don't need to be super precise here, again we want to make it look like it's watercolor, so like pigments are flowing and blending together, but you want to get rid of the digital looking part of it. <laughs> So depending on the area that you're blending, you might need to change the size of your brush so that it doesn't over blend everything. And be really careful here at the part where the top of the body connects with the bottom part of the body. You want to just blend in the top part of the edge and then keep the lower edge crisp so that we can see that there's a distinction between again the top part and the lower part. Now here I'm going to stop talking, let you focus, speed up the video and we're going to meet at the next step once everything is blended really nicely. Now at this stage, it's normal if it looks a little bit weird, we're going to sharpen up everything later by adding some details, but for now just go ahead and hide the sketch to kind of see what you're working with. And if you over blended some parts of it, it's okay, you can always use the eraser, setting it to mm, maybe the 6B pencil from the sketching panel, just so that you have some grit to your, your lines a little bit. And then you can just go ahead and erase some parts to clean up your beat. But be careful, don't over erase. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. If you just go over and erase the entire shade to make it so smooth, it doesn't look like watercolor anymore. It's just really weird. So go ahead and clean up the parts that are really, really too blended or the, the parts where it looks like the pigments have bled in the paper way too much but don't overdo it you still want to look like watercolor so you're gonna get some flowy shapes and it's gonna look like yeah watercolor <laughs> so again this looks crazy but it's fine this is what we want for now trust me just trust the process we're gonna make it look good better but for now we're gonna add even more color variation so for that use the selection tool here at the top setting it to freehand and making sure the color fill option is deactivated. You're going to draw a random selection on the same side that you have your shadows, so in my case on the left side, and then you're going to feather your selection around 20%. Again, it can be any kind of shape you want, as long as there's some wobbliness to it, you're good. You're then going to go in the adjustment panel here at the top, selecting hue saturation and brightness for the entire layer, which is going to allow you to create more color variation by changing these little sliders here at the bottom. So I'm creating more shadows, which means I'm going to lower the brightness, maybe play with the saturation, the hue a little bit, but at this stage, you mostly want to focus on lowering the brightness again to create even stronger shadows on your shadow side. And once you're happy with the result, you can just click on the selection tool again to exit it. And you can repeat the step as many times as you want. So again, just using the selection tool, setting it to freehand and drawing a completely random shape. This time, maybe feathering around 20% again. And go back to the adjustment panel, selecting use saturation and brightness for the entire layer. And maybe this time just playing with the hue again to add more color variation in your piece. So especially if you're using the free brushes from Procreate, you might want to repeat the step two, three, four, five times, maybe even, well, I'm pushing it, two or three times uh, to really get some randomness in your color that you're not getting because you're using the free brushes. Like I was telling you, the watercolor brushes do have some randomness in them that you're not getting in the free brushes. So that's a way of reintroducing some randomness and color variation in your color. And just a quick little step that is totally optional here before we start adding the details, we can also add some splatters. So you just have to create a new layer, rename it to splatters and making sure that it is above the color layer. You might also want to change the blending mode of this layer to linear burn so that these splatters look good both on the B as well as on the white background. 
In terms of color, I like going back to the base color that I used for the B, so the yellow color. And for the brushes, I'm not gonna lie, in terms of free brushes, there are not that many great options. If you go in the spray paint panel, you're gonna see this Chiclet brush here, which does look like better. It is just a little bit too dense for my liking, but maybe you like it. And there's also this splatter brush here, which does look more like splatter, but not necessarily watercolor splatter. So you can use one of those and find which one you prefer. Otherwise, if you have the watercolor brushes, which I'm always trying to find, there we go, you can use the splatter brush that comes with it and just sprinkle some splatters over your bumblebee. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, you're done with the hardest part. All we have to do now is just adding some details to make everything look so much better than it does right now. So for that, create a new layer above the splatters and above the color and rename it to details. You're gonna go back to picking the grayish brownish color that you used for the B stripes. And you're gonna go back to the same pencil that you use for the sketch. Well, not necessarily. You can go back in the sketching panel and picking either the HP pencil if you want or the 6B pencil. Might be a good option as well as it's a little bit thicker so you can experiment and find the one that you prefer. Otherwise, if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and go back to the coloring pencil. Now in this step, we want to go and add more definition in some parts. So to do that on the legs, I like to just outline the bottom part of the leg as well as the connection between the separate little segments. So something a little bit like this. And you would just do that on all of the legs. Now once more, I'm going to stop talking, speed up the video, let you focus, and we're gonna be in the next step in which we're going to add the details on the body. So just go over all your legs doing the same thing and Great, so for the body, we're gonna do this a little bit differently. Since we're drawing a bumblebee, they actually look like they have little fur, which is just so cute. So you want to draw the outline as little strokes instead of just one, you know, clean outline. And you wanna make sure that your strokes are not all in the same direction and not exactly the same length, and you want to have them be a little bit curvy. So you wanna avoid doing something like this. You want them to be softer and also kind of following the direction of the body, more like this. So once more, I'm gonna speed up the video, you know the drill, feel free to take all the time you need and we're gonna meet in the next step in which we're going to add the details on the face. Awesome, so the face is a little bit easier in the sense that I pretty much just outlined the whole thing here, but you might want to add some eyes. And for that, you're just going to draw two little half moon shapes on the side where the face connects, well, the head connects with the top of the body. And you can also draw the antennas here, so two sections, something super simple like this. But now we're missing probably the most important part of our bumblebee, the wings. So for that, you're probably going to want to reactivate your sketch just so you can see what we're doing. And on the details layer, we're just going to go over and draw a cleaner version of this sketch. So here, I don't want to reactivate the symmetry because I want my wings to be very similar, but not the exact same. So having this sketch is going to help us save some time, but it's also you know, not exactly the same thing that we want to draw on both sides. So here, what I personally like to do is thicken the top part of the wing and drawing the individual little section with rounded angles. <laughs> so something like this. And then, what I am going to do later is just fill in these little gaps that are created between the shapes. So again, you're free to do whatever you want, but this is what I personally like. I think it gives a softer look to the entire pattern, but yeah, experiment, see what you like. This is what I like, so this is what I'm going to be doing. And you probably guessed it, I'm going to speed up the video, stop talking, let you focus on your wings, let you do both sides. I'm going to do the second one, the left one, off camera, and then we're going to meet up for the very last step in which I'm going to show you how to recolor your outlines for the wings. Okay. 
Okay, so once you have both of your wings, go back and hide your sketch layer just so we have a better idea of the final product. It is not quite final because we do want to change the color. And for that, you're going to swipe with two fingers your details layer towards the right, which is going to activate alpha lock. You can also manually activate it by tapping on it on the menu. <laughs> and what alpha lock does basically is everything we draw now on the details layer is going to stay within the lines that we already drawn. So that way you can just go over, pick a lighter color. I'm going to go with a cream yellow color and you can just brush over the ends of your wings to make them blend in and be a little bit less intense looking. So you could also use the selection tool and the hue saturation and brightness to do that but I personally like to just brush over to get a little bit more control over what I'm coloring and also maybe not get as like smooth of a gradient and getting more grit and texture in my color. And that's the beauty of art. There are so many ways of doing like the same thing basically. So many techniques with tiny little difference between them. And if you enjoyed this video and want to give a flower friend to your bee, I highly recommend you check out this video in which I'm going to teach you how to draw a watercolor crocus in Procreate. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then just click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.